Uh, welcome everybody. I'm just opening up the live feed. Uh, we're going to start at 930. Um, so we're just going to leave this feed open so people can join us. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our virtual seminar. I have a special guest here, my daughter. When we're talking about campground tips today. We're talking about how what fun it is to go camping and how to enjoy it. So she wanted to say hello and say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi, sweetie. What's going on? Welcome everybody. And I hope everybody's having a good morning this morning. My name is Patrick Clyde. I'm the service manager at Burlington RV. And just like my daughter said, we'll be talking about campground tips and tricks, and then waste management. So it's gonna be a two-part section. Uh, just to also introduce my wife, Courtney Clyde, is behind the camera. She'll be answering any type of comments that you have. Um, if you do have questions or anything like that, I do ask that you could just write them down and hold off uh, from putting them in until the end of this live seminar, and I'll answer them at that point. Um, if you are watching this seminar or not, live uh, basically later on please 
call the shop for any questions that you have at area code 262-321-2500 as we don't monitor this uh, comment feed constantly during the seminar or I should I say after the seminar. So let's get started. Uh, uh, basic campground tips and tricks. So the first thing I like to do when I go camping is I want to pre-set up before I go to any campground. I want to kind of do my research. And it's very important to find um, a campground that's gonna best fit my needs for the camper that I have, and the length that I have, and the amenities that I'm looking for. So if I find a campground and I wanna be a full hookup campground with a sewer and everything else, uh, I'm gonna research that to find out which one fits my needs as well as the length. I wanna make sure that I'm long enough, uh, if I don't feel comfortable backing up or doing anything like that, if I can get a pull through, so doing the research on your campground is a good idea to have a, lead, a less stressful or a, a non-stressful trip. So, because going to a campground at the very beginning can be stressful, trying to find it, trying to park, trying to do everything. Research is key to make it less stressful. We also have some tools over here that I'll go over to help it also reduce that stress. Um, also, because of COVID-19 and everything that's going on, it's some campgrounds are open, some campgrounds are not. It's always good to do your research on reservations. We all know before COVID-19 in Wisconsin, starting early for reservations was a must. And it still is because we don't know the limitations of what they have, whether or not you have a tent trailer that doesn't have a shower or anything like that, are those showers open? So do your research at that time for those type of purposes. Um, Another thing I like to do, and I do this a lot no matter where I go, is I will try to obtain some sort of map of the campground. Once I know the site that I have chosen, I will obtain a map of that campground so I know the directions of where those routes are going so it's easy for me to get into that site. And I also do an extra step where I'll go onto Google Map and I'll, stick, uh, I'll pick the satellite image and I'll zoom in to that area so I understand what I'm about to get into. So, it just makes it easier to know before you get there. Another thing I like to do if I'm doing a long camping trip or I'm driving a, a, quite a distance and I know I'm gonna need to fuel, I'll sometimes judge my fuel mileage and kind of see the areas of where there might be truck stops uh, to refuel. It's always easier when you have a long trailer to get into a truck stop or anything like that and it's good to know where they are before you go. So, it just makes it a little easier. I mean, I've been in times where I haven't done that and I was driving and I had to just look at a gas station. Can I make it in there? Yeah, I, yeah, I can. I have to veer off and that could be dangerous. So it's always better to do a little pre-planning, even in that aspect. I know it seems a little extreme, but less stress makes for a better time. Um, so now that you've kind of done your some of that research, before I leave, and now I've got all my campgrounds set up and I know where I'm going, I know where my spot is, I know what to expect when I get there, what we want to do is prepare our RV our RV for travel and ready to go. So I always tell everybody to bring their campers home or if they're at home, that's fine. Plug them in two days in advance uh, just to get the batteries charged up, uh, get the refrigerator cold. If you're using a adapter down uh, to like a 15 amp plug, that's just like a plug in our homes, you can do that, but it is only meant for certain things to be on, no ACs. Uh, it'll create that plug to be very hot. It's meant to just have the fridge going and get the battery charged up. You can turn the lights on because they're 12 volt and get the camper ready. But it's important that you do that two days in advance. Uh, it'll give you enough time for everything to be ready. Um, so now that you've got your camper ready, you've got your planned out camping trip and you're ready to go, now we arrive at the campground. We've already got all of our gas uh, at the spots that we need to stop, where we needed to stop. We made it there, less stressful. At the campground, we go in there, we get the uh, uh, um, information from the site, or from the campground host, and we get everything checked in. Now we get to our campground, the one we're actually gonna go in, and we pulled up to it. So the number one thing you wanna do right when you pull up to a camp, uh, your campground, where you're gonna park it, is to make sure that the area is clear. I mean clear, not so much on the ground, we wanna make sure that's clear, but it usually is, but I'm talking about trees. Stuff uh, that could hit your camper, scratch your camper, um, mainly tear your rubber roof. Uh, I get a lot of people that have pulled into a campground and uh, they don't see those trees of the overhang and those, 
Those rubber roofs are very solid on material like lasting for a long time, but they are very vulnerable to impact damage. I replace a lot of rubber roofs because of impact damage. I, very, I don't think I've ever replaced a roof because material failure just in itself. Uh, improperly installed, I've done it, but not for material failure. It's a pretty durable rubber roof, um, but it is easier, very vulnerable to impact. Um, so make sure that the area is clear and you know you can get in there. So now that I've established the fact that the area is clear uh, and I'm able, I want to back up into that campground, they have some products to help us out. Um, this here is a Furion Vision camera. It's a backup camera as well as an observation camera. So it stays on while you're driving. I'm just going to make sure you guys can see that. Yeah. All right. This camera is a the highly used today. A lot of people are doing this. A lot of the campers are coming pre-wired for this camera specifically. Uh, all the Grand Designs should have it. I believe most Jayco's have it. And you can purchase this camera and all it is is uh, four screws on the back. You can take it down. You should be able to plug this camera in, insert it, and then pair the device. And uh, people have been using this a lot. It makes it a lot easier to back up and see what's behind you and not hit anything. Since this has come out, I have seen rear end damage from backing into things drop significantly. And this probably came out, I would say, maybe three, four years ago. Might be a little off on that, but that's when I started noticing them the most. So this has become a, a hot ticket item. Everybody is using these. It's a great thing to have. If you don't have a pre-wired setup, don't worry about it. It still can be done. We just have to take the wire from the clearance light up above. And then this will be powered up as long as your headlights are on in the vehicle. Same thing, clearance lights power up, this powers up. So that's a product that we're using a lot and it seems to be helping people. And a new thing that just came out, and I'll bring this one up too, is the side cameras. It's this one right here. And this one, which you'll see a marker light attached to it. Now this will get it placed at the front of your camper on the first marker light that we come to. It'll have power, same concept as the backup camera. We're gonna wire it into that marker light. It'll power up the marker light when the lights are on, as well as this camera. You would need one on each side and then you can get a camera that will have the vision of the sides and the back. So that way, if you're by yourself or nobody's helping you or somebody went to the bathroom, you can still back up this, cam this camper by yourself with ease uh, and knowing that you're not gonna hit anything. Now, I do make sure to tell you that this is really meant for backing up purposes, not for turn, turn signals or anything like that because this only sees from the camper back. It doesn't see the side of your truck. So do not use this for any type of turn signal just for backing up, but it is a great product to use. So now say when we're gonna back up the camper into the site, and that's a stressful time for anybody. Myself, the first time I did it, I remembered I was very stressed. Oh, hold on, I think we have one question. What's the cost of your new camera? Uh, for the cost, no, uh, what I wanted, if you have any questions on cost for the cameras, please contact the parts department at 321 20, uh, 262 321 2500. It's not that I dialed out a lot. But uh, contact parts and they can give you the prices on that because there are several different styles of it. So I'd rather you talk to them for the accurate pricing that best fits your needs. Um, so when you're backing up, and this, is, this was taught to me the first time I went to a campground. And of course, when you get to the campground, it's like anybody that's been at a campground uh, before and sees somebody driving in, it's almost like they can tell this is your first time. I don't know how, but they can. And they always got a beer in their hand or whatever the case may be. Uh, I remember my first time was a guy came up with a beer in his hand. He, he might've been a little tipsy, but he gave me one of the best advice. Uh, he gave me the best advice that I still use to this day and it helped me back up. I can put a trailer anywhere I want right now uh, within, mar within small margins of error. Um, and he basically told me that as you back up, everything is about small turns and bringing it back, so following it. So what I mean by that is, so when you back up and you wanna turn, you don't wanna really crank it because if you crank it, you're gonna overcorrect and then you're just gonna be doing this as you go back and it's gonna make it very difficult for backing up. What you wanna do is small turns. So you're gonna do there, bring it back, there, bring it back. And you're just gonna follow it as you go. So keep a little more turn, bring it back, a little more turn, bring it back. 
And if you go too far, the easiest way to straighten back out is just put it in drive, go straight forward for about three feet and you'll be right back to where you need to be. A man with a beer taught me that. I've used it ever since. So, uh, it's, and to me it was good advice. I hope it helps you. Um, so now that we've gotten to this campsite and we have now backed into it and we've established that this is where we want to be, um, the first thing we want to do is walk around the camper before we level, before we do all that, and just verify that if I'm going to pick this exact spot, that I'm going to be able to reach with all my amenities that I need to use. That would be my hose, my sewer hose, uh, anything that I got to hook up will reach the connection points that I need. Uh, I have pulled into a site and got completely set up and then realized I was short by three feet. Um, so it, you have to tear everything down and back up three feet in order to do that. Um, it's a good idea to know what is, um, what is your distance and what's there. Sorry, there's some noise out here. <laughs> okay, so what we got here, so now that we've established uh, our area, of where we're at and we're at a good location to where our um, uh, distance for our hoses and uh, as well as uh, our sewer hose and we want to set up. Now we want to level and this is the most common thing that I get calls on all the time is and it's because of improper leveling is stuff doesn't close right or open in my camper, I, my bathroom door won't close and every time they come into the service drive I test it in the drive and it works perfectly fine. I know the reason why is because of the leveling issue. And the leveling is caused because a lot of folks, if they have the stabilizer jacks, believe that they can level the camper with those stabilizer jacks. I kind of wish I brought one with me today, but I didn't. But if you have a camper, you know what they are. And they'll level the side to side with those stabilizer jacks. Well, what that does is it actually twists your frame. And when it twists your frame, then the stuff inside will not fit square. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're not using your leveling jacks or your, your stabilizer jacks as a leveling purpose. What you want to do, and this is the first thing you do, so you found your spot, you want to level it from side to side. So that's the tires. If you have auto leveling, this really won't apply to you. So this is just for folks that don't have the auto leveling. If you do not, this right here, is an Anderson Camper Leveler. I'm gonna see if I can get it and hold it, it's kind of heavy. So this product right here, when it came out, it was only sold on TV, but now most camper shops can get it. Um, it is a great tool. I, everybody I've ever talked to that has used this, loves this. And basically all you do is you put one chalk underneath each tire. So if you have two dual axles, you need two of these. You put it behind each tire, uh, let's see if I got a better picture of this. Maybe I can get it in there. So you see how they have it underneath the tire? So basically you're just going to put it under each one back up until you get to the point of level and sometimes people have somebody else standing there or they have phones with leveling apps now. There's all kinds of things you can use. But you'll back up to the point of level and stop. You throw a chalk under it and you're done. You do not need to level the side to side anymore. This makes it very easy from the old way that we used to do it by putting blocks down or, or those little plastic chocks and trying to stack them up and then realize we put too many and have to pull, drive away and pull it off. This is a one-stop shop. Just put it under, roll it back, stop, chalk it, you're done. This is a great system to use. A lot of people are using it and they love it. Then once we've established that that side to side is level, now we want to level front to back, so we'll use either the tongue jack or the fifth wheel jacks uh, to go up and down until the point of level. That one's pretty cut and dry. So now that our, our camper is completely level, we want to then extend our stabilizer jacks. They are only meant to stabilize, so we'll bring our stabilizer jacks down until they touch the ground. If you want to use a uh, drill bit, you can just be easy on the trigger because it does shake a bit and I have seen damage caused because of a drill bit, so just be nice and easy and slow on the trigger as you bring it down. But what it's designed to do is once it touches the ground, half a turn. That's it, you pull it away. I think we have another question. Someone asked specifically, do you always back up to level or can you pull forward to level? Uh, somebody asked if you could back up to level or pull forward to level. I'm sure you ask 10 people, you get 10 different answers on that one. I would back up, that's me. 
Uh, I don't think it's a big deal to go back and forward, but I've always just backed up and did it. But if you run out of space when you're using those blocks and you gotta go forward again, sometimes I'll, you could throw a block underneath it and drive forward, but that's where the Andersons make it a little bit easier to where it's only a one-stop shop. Um, so, once we get there, and now we've got it leveled, and we got it chalked up and ready to go, sometimes I come across this, and it's important, the reason why I brought this is because it's not a common thing, but sometimes it's not explained during a, a hookup or a walkthrough or any of the cases, or maybe somebody just may have missed that or, or didn't catch that during the walkthrough, and that's this. This here is a break away. This is the cord, we've all seen it, we gotta hook it to our trucks when we get set up. This is not a break for when you get to the campground. You should never, ever, ever pull this out. As you can see, I'll bring this one closer, somebody had pulled this one out, and you can see it's completely melted. And what happens when this is pulled, it now allows full 12 volt power to the magnets in order to stop the vehicle because it thinks that it is detached from your actual uh, truck or SUV, whatever you're driving. So it's designed to pull, it's a one-time pull. It's designed to lock up those brakes so it doesn't cause any damage to any other motorist on the road and it kind of drifts. I mean, obviously if this is happening, nothing good is happening behind you, but it's meant to be safe for other motorists so it doesn't cause damage and slows you down. Uh, this is not at all meant for breaking the camper when you get to the site so you don't have to chalk the wheels. This, if pulled, can cause about a thousand dollar repair if it's left off for a long period of time and melts your backing plates with magnets or has any issues with your braking system. It can cause damage. It has a very expensive repair, so please do not pull this. If you do accidentally, it's not a big deal, just put it right back in. 20 seconds isn't gonna hurt anything, it's for long periods of time. So please make sure do not use this as a break. This is meant for emergency use only. So now we've got it leveled side to side. We didn't use our breakaway switch at all for that. We've got it uh, set up to ready to go camp. I like this. Some, this is a mixed opinion. Some people I've had mixed re, uh, reviews on this, but I've used it myself and it seems to work great to help with the shimmy in there. Um, and these are the air shocks. And I'll kind of bring them up right here. Sorry, it's a little heavy. But um, this right here uh, is a good source to keep these tires steady and, and tight in there so there's no movement. It really reduces the movement in there as well as it acts as a chalk so it can't roll away. Um, I like them a lot. I've used one only. Some people like to use two, um, but it's up to you whatever you would like to use but I think it is a great product to use. Um, the only thing I ask that if you do own these and you're dropping off for service, please don't put these chocks in between the wheels as you're dropping off. It's very hard for my porter to see them, so uh, don't use these when you're dropping off. My stuff's level out here. It's not gonna roll away, I promise. Uh, I don't need any chocks or anything when you're dropping off for service. So I just ask that since I have people here and it can save some issues with the tires or damage if I pull it with it on there. Okay, um, so now that you've used your, uh, you got it leveled, you got it chalked, um, you're now going to want to uh, open your slide outs now that it's level, open them all up, make sure everything's clear. Uh, on every slide out, it's not going to hit any tree branches or anything above there. Uh, another thing, like if you are in a tree, uh, an area where there's a lot of trees and you have slide outs, it's a good idea to add. I didn't bring anything with me, but you can Google it, slide toppers. Um, they're a great thing to keep all the debris out. I've seen cases to where tree branches have fallen in the tracks of the slide outs and then it gets stuck up underneath the seal and a little, just a twig. And if it rains hard, that water can work its way inside because of that one little twig. So slide toppers are a good thing to use, but you should always, you know, make sure you clean it off before you leave on the slide outs and make sure everything's clear. Um, so we got the slide outs open, we got it completely leveled up and uh, stabilizers down, slide outs out. So we need to start doing our hookup. And this is something I probably should have said earlier on the setup, make sure that you're talking for the correct site of power. If I have a 50 amp service, then I wanna make sure that I'm using a, a, 
uh, I have a 50 amp camper. And what you'll mean by that, this is not one that'll have four prongs, uh, the male version of this, uh, and that would be a 50 amp. If you have a 30 amp camper, it's gonna look like a plug like this, and I probably should bring that a little closer. That's a 30 amp plug. That's a 50 amp plug. Now, once again, nothing in our camper is 220. I know on some of those old covers it says 220. This is 110, 110 neutral ground. So these two never intermix to make 220. So one goes to one side of the camper, the other one goes to the other side of the camper. There's nothing in our campers that have 220 unless there are like a high a prevost or something that may have a washer and dryer that can do it. I've heard some different things like that, but 98% of all campers, nothing in there is 220. And then same thing here, this has just got one feed that goes through everything. So you have a 110 neutral ground. But when you get to the campground, you wanna make sure that you are using the correct feed. Now, if you came to a campground that you had no choice but to get a 30 amp service and you have a 50 amp camper, you can still do it. You would use this tool right here to hook up. You just have to remember you've downgraded the amps that are going into your camper. So can I run both ACs? No, you should not do that, just run one. Uh, those are the big amp draw items. So just be mindful, try to get what is correct, correct for your camper. It makes it for an easier trip. Um, also another thing that I do recommend when you get to the campground you're plugging in is a surge guard. Um, I've heard stories to where I've heard one where a camper went out with a group of 10 other campers went through an electrical storm, lost power, and when power was restored, he was the only one who had a surge guard, and he is also the only one who had power when that power came back on. So uh, it can do damage. So a surge guard is something to help protect it. It's worth having. It tells you if there's dirty power on any type of plug that you plug in before doing so. Uh, it's a great tool to use. You can contact our parts department on pricing. There's, a, there's various different models and types that you can use, but they all have the same purpose, and that's basically to protect your camper from any type of surge protection or surge issue. Um, so always use this. And then another tip, when you get to the campground, and I get this question a lot, where people will call and they have no 110 power, and they've done it all right, they've plugged in, and they have no 110. A good campground usually has all breakers flipped off at the pole. And that's a good thing to do. You always want your breaker off at the pole, if you can, uh, be, plug in and then turn the breaker on. Um, so don't forget about that breaker on the pole because a lot of people plug in. The easiest way to tell is if your microwave has power. If you can see the clock on your microwave, you know you have 110 coming into your camper. Um, if you do not see that, the first thing you should check is straight at that pole to find out if that breaker is flipped on. Nine times out of 10, that is the cause. So things to know about plugging in. Okay, next um, we have water hookup. Now, during our research of which campground we're gonna use, we're gonna understand whether or not we have water hookup at that site or do not. So if you do not have water hookup at that site, you need to pre-prepare for that at home by filling up your fresh water tank, or if you're lucky enough, you can fill up at the campground at a different location and go to the campsite. That way you're not uh, wasting gas, driving a, a 30 gallons of water all the way up to your campsite. So if you can uh, retrieve water where the campground is, it just doesn't have it at your site, that's the best way to do is to leave it empty and fill it there. Um, if you can't, then you gotta fill it at home. It's designed to do that. It just you know, takes a little bit more gas to get there. Um, but if you have full hookup, even better, you don't have to worry about it. You just hook up and use the city water connection. So. I like to use this. This is an inline filter. Some campers already have filters in them. Uh, a lot of motorhomes will already have an inline filter set up. Even if you wanted me to set up an inline filter in your camper, I can do that. Um, depending on your room, most campers I can. But if you don't want to mess with that and you just want to get one that hooks onto the hose, these work great too. Hook this up to the hose and then turn the faucet on, whether you're filling just the potable water in the tank or if you're using it on city water, just make sure that it reaches and you should have already established that when you did your walk around before you hooked everything or got all your levelers down so you just hook this up turn it on and you should be good to go but this filter is a great product i'll get it close so you can see it it's made by belterra I... okay. 
I hope you guys can see it. It's a little hard for my camera. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now, the last two things when you're going to the campground, little tips and tricks that I like to tell people is if you have, you come to the campground and, and it is great to get a site that has full hookup with sewer and everything else. Uh, but I've had this issue happen a few times and it's not a good issue and it'll go kind of carry into our next topic that we're going to talk about, about waste management. But when you hook up to your sewer hose, it's fine to hook it up and get it ready, but do not leave your valve open for your black tank. So if I have a full service campsite and I have my sewer hookup right there, do not leave the valve open because what's going to happen, this is going to get kind of nasty, what's going to happen is when you go down the poop chute and you take a poop and it lands and you have that valve open, all the water that's supposed to fill up in there is just going to flow right on out and all the poop is going to sit there and decay and grow. My daughter is laughing behind me, so it's just going to grow all that poop there and then it gets hard. And I promise you, I don't have a single tech in my shop that is willing to get that out for you. It is going to be a new tank replacement. They just will not do it. You, I'll show you some tricks to try to help get it out, but when it, if somebody's done this for long periods of time, it, there's no, it, it's one. Uh, so it's hard to get that out. So make sure you leave the black tank valve closed, let it fill up with poop, and then once it gets to about two thirds full or whatever it is, uh, dump it out and then use the gray to rinse it. So full service campsites are awesome because you don't have to find the dump site at the end of the trip. You don't have to wait in the lines. You don't have to do any of that other items, but please, oh please do not leave that black tank valve open. Leave it closed, it is important. And then if you have issues at a campground, uh, we all know campers can have some issues. That's why I'm in service, that's why we fix them. Um, but if you have issues at the campground, uh, obviously there's, not a lot of resources right there ready to go, but the few things that you do have is you can always go to the front host. Uh, I get this call a lot, I'm at a campground, what do they do? You can go to the campground host and ask them if they have any cards of a mobile tech. Um, if it's a severe issue or something that is causing you to get stuck, the leveling jacks won't retract, uh, slide outs won't go in, and you need a mobile tech, you can always go to the camp host. They always have at least every time I've ever called, they've always got somebody's card that's in the area that is a technician that is an independent guy that can come out and see and take a look at your unit. Um, obviously, there are various charges in different areas, but uh, they are independent. Um, also, we here have a 24 hour hotline. Now, that hotline is one of my technicians out there, uh, so they do work during the day. So if it's in the middle of the night, they may not give you a call until the following morning unless that ring woke them up but leave a message, they do monitor it, they will give you a call back. Or if it's during open business hours, you can call my service center. We're pretty good over the phone to help you. I mean, there are situations that I just can't fix it over the phone, but we have been very successful by phone uh, uh, quite a bit. So it's, it's one thing to know that you can contact during business hours or after business hours or go to the phone office. Uh, how would someone contact an emergency tech? Like, do they call the main number that's off hours and there's a comp? Uh, somebody asked, how do you contact a, a technician after hours? Um, basically, if you call our main line, 262-321-2500, uh, and you go through the prompts, it'll ask for services one, parts is one, and I think sales. You want to let those ones go and then pick, um, uh, it'll say tech helpline. It'll be like, I believe the fourth option. I know it changed a little bit after COVID because we kind of messed with our phone systems. But it's the fourth option, and I know that people have been calling and I've talked to the tech, and so it must be on there as an option, but it is the main line, and just listen to all the options, and then you'll press that one, and it'll go to his phone. Um, okay, that's the basic campgrounds. If you have any questions about campground um, uh, tips or anything like that that you want to know, just hold those questions. I want to go over the waste cleanout system, and then at the end, I'll open it up for more questions on everything and we can go through that with you guys. I just wanna be able to get through the bulk of this real quick. Um, waste management. Let me slide all this stuff over. Okay. The 
number one thing that you need to know about waste management, number one thing, nothing good comes out of that hole. Nothing out of that three inch hole down there at the bottom. So gloves, mask, whatever you want to use, but definitely gloves is the key thing. Uh, there's nothing worse than getting poop on your hand. And I'll show you some tricks about that if you do and, and different things, but gloves is a necessity to use. I'm just showing you these. We have these at the register. We, any gloves will work, uh, preferably ones that you can throw away, obviously disposable ones, but gloves are a must. So, okay. Obviously this is a short version hose. If you have managed to make this hose work at a campground, I, I don't know how you could possibly do it as a display, but this hose is, is a Titan hose. It's a display hose, but it's the same concept of the same thing. It's durable, it's tough. It is important to get a, I know sometimes they can be a little bit more expensive and there are cheaper hoses out of there. This is poop we're talking about. So please spend the money on a good hose. It is poop and you don't want to go cheap on that or else you will look like Robin Williams in RV. So make sure that you get the right hose. And I like this one, it's Titan. We've got tons of them in the store. Uh, it's made in the USA. It's a great hose. Uh, they say you can run over some of it, but I don't recommend that. It's still plastic to me. <laughs> so um, please uh, get a good hose. That's number one. So obviously the basic thing when you dump is this, you fill up your black tank like we talked about earlier, two thirds full or, uh, um, Half, wherever you're at and then you dump it and then after you finish dumping it you're gonna close it off and then dump it with the grate to rinse the rest out and then uh, after you've done that if you have a flush out system you hook it up and it'll kind of flush it out but you must open the blackout black valve when you are flushing it out that's the basic uh, flush out system uh, and basic setup that most everybody does now, say you have a problem, and I'm gonna talk about waste management and how to clean out our black tanks the best we can, um, and ways to do it and what to do to maintain it. So, obviously we know uh, chemical, uh, Cronin's what we like to use, but chemical is a great thing. I've shown this on my last seminar, but I'll bring it up again so everybody can see it. There you go. So, when you get to a campsite, and like I said, you ask 10 guys, you get 10 different answers, but I like to put a couple gallons of water just by stepping on the toilet and letting water run in there, and I drop one of those in right away. That's me, I like to do that. Some people like to let it fill a little bit and then drop one in. I don't know if there's really a right or wrong way to do that, but as long as you're putting one of those tablets in, that's, that's the key. Um, and uh, so we got the tablets in there, but say we have a problem, and I'm gonna talk about a few different problems that I see that come across my desk a lot. Uh, every once in a while. Number one I get, and this is the one I like a lot is, or I don't like it, it's actually disgusting, but I, I hear it a lot, is that I open my cap and I get a handful of poop on my hand. But it's not really your hand because you are using these gloves, hopefully, but it comes out of the cap and it's disgusting. And it happens a lot. And the reason why that happens is this. Wrong toilet paper being used. This is the right stuff, Charmin Ultra Soft, is RV's enemy. It does, you know, that it's great at home. I, love, I have all kinds of it. It's the best toilet paper in my opinion, but it is horrible with RV's because it doesn't dissolve and it causes problems with the dumping system. You must use um, environmentally safe breakdown toilet paper. It has to be used. Uh, so what will happen when we're using the wrong type of toilet paper, and in various cases I've seen it happen with the correct, but most of the time with the wrong, this is your average dump valve. Now you could have a cable valve or uh, a long valve that you can't see this. Some people can see it right at the end of their uh, uh, connection where they hook their hose. See this, this valve, it's like a knife valve. And trust me, this one's a brand new one. I would never stick my finger anywhere near that if it wasn't. Um, and you can see it slides. Now what happens when it's coming down this pipe and it gets caught right here? And this is the most common thing that happens is then it's open and this got stuck there. Everything's out, the water's out, so nothing's there to flush this out anymore. And so somebody closes that camper right in there and it's all wet and nasty. And so now it gets shoved in between the cracks right here. That no longer has a good seal and that will create an issue of water passing through and that's where you get the handful of poop. Now, 
That is the most common reason why you get that. Now every once in a while, these are the seals that go in there. They can get caught in here and cause the same problem, but nine times out of 10, when I open this up, I find toilet paper there. Now, you know, I have had issues to where I've done this repair and on a cable valve system, that repair can be upwards of $500. That warranty will not cover when there's toilet paper stuck in there. It could be a brand new unit on your first trip. You can wedge that toilet paper in there and if I find toilet paper in there, the manufacturer is going to deny me coverage. Uh, so it is, and it can happen very easily. So use the correct toilet paper that will lessen your chance of that ever happening to you. But something I like to do because it does happen to so many people is I like to add a secondary valve. I have to remember all, all the packages these to go to. I like to add a secondary valve at the end of the dump tank. This just snaps on. Pretend this is the hose that, um, or the pipe that comes out of your camper. It just snaps on right here and it stays there. It's pretty solid. We have never had one fall off. You can also hard plumb one on, which means you cut the end of the pipe off and you hard glue one on there. I like that better, but some campers you can't do that because there's no room. This valve right here is a my opinion, a guaranteed way never to get a handful of poop again. You use this, I have never ever had a handful of poop, and if it did somehow get stuck right here, that same situation where that toilet paper, where this stuff's tight, got stuck right in here, it's right there, I can pick it out. And if it did bypass, all I'm getting is that much poop, which is just a drizzle. So I've never seen that happen on one at the end of the termination valve, but an easy fix to do. It lessens your chance of ever having it. I believe every camper, unless you have the valve right at the end of the, the hose, the, the pipe that comes out and there's a valve and it looks just like this already, I believe every camper should have one of these. It's worth it. The amount of folks that I've talked to that have had this happen to them, they're like, why didn't anybody tell me about this? Why are we not doing this? Uh, I just believe it should be on every camper. But it is a great thing to have. Um, so that's just those trips of, of uh, tips of that going through. Now, say we come into a situation and we want to clean it out. Now, we just want to kind of rinse it out. You have that Santa flush system on some campers. If you have it, you should know about it. Never, ever, ever fill your black tank with that Santa flush system or the flush out system. Don't fill it up. That system is only meant to be used with the black valve Oops, I didn't mean to throw the seal. The black valve open. That flush out system, when turned with water on, this must be open to allow it to escape. If you leave that closed and you allow it to fill up with water through the flush out system and it gets past the vent, because there's a vent in there that sticks down, it will now create pressure because the air has nowhere to go. And I've had several customers this has happened to that have done this. And what happens if they're trying to see if they filled up their water full? They always look down the toilet to see if it's full. Well, when there's a bunch of air pressure in there and they use that black tank to fill it and they hit the toilet, I've heard of explosions coming out of that toilet of poop into their face. So I mean this seriously, leave this valve open when you're using, my daughter's laughing back there again. Use this valve open when you're using flush out system. It is important, but say, it happens to every single, uh, not every single camper, but it happens to most of us that we fill up our, or we do our dump, we dump our system out, we flush it out, and it still reads full or half full or whatever the case may be. It still shows that there's stuff in there. But you know there's not because you've dumped the tank. So it's not uncommon. I would say it happens to about 80% of people that I, at least that's what I feel, uh, that I get that call that often. Um, so how do we clean that out? And the sensors do fail from time to time, but it's very rare. Uh, nine out of 10 times, it's just debris, poop, uh, toilet paper, something stuck on the sensor on the inside. And you've done the rinse out, that doesn't guarantee it's gonna get it off. Honestly, there's really nothing out there that guarantees it's gonna get it off, but there is something that I have done for years and I've told customers to do this. And I, I would say it's about nine out of 10 times works every time. And I tell people to fill up the, the black tank full of water through the toilet 
not through the flush up, through the toilet. So leave the toilet open and just, you can either stand on the toilet with the water on and wait. It'll take you a good hour, it seems like, or a half hour. I wouldn't say just how long you need to monitor it. And, or just grab a hose and stick it in through the toilet and just fill it up through there with that toilet ball valve open. And just watch it, don't walk away from it uh, because you don't wanna overfill that at all. Fill it up to about three quarters to almost full, close it off. It, drop one of these great chemicals in there. Uh, there's a lot of brands out there, they all do this, you know, this one that we like to use, we know it works, but not to knock any of the other ones, I'm sure they work too. Um, drop one of those in there, let it sit for two days, and then you can drive it down to the dealership or any dump site, and I promise you those roads, there's nothing smooth out there. So it will shake the living heck out of that tank, and it sloshes everything around, and then usually when folks do that and they say they have it full, I'll tell them, do this, fill it up, put the chemical in there, let it sit for two days, bring it down here for your next service appointment, and when you get here, dump. If it still shows full, I will then look at it. If it, and nine times out of 10, they do that, they come to the service drive, and they say, I don't need to do anything with that one, it cleared it out. It seems to work every time, uh, not every, nine times out of 10. It's a good tip to do, so please use it. Um, now, the worst case scenario. Uh, I've had cases where kids have dropped things down the toilet. This is all bad if, if, if a toilet, if a black tank gets clogged. I, there's no good, I mean, there's only luck at this point. Uh, if you clog a black tank to where you know it's full, you can see it down the toilet, you open that valve, and hopefully the valve is malfunctioned, because if the valve is operating correctly and it's just clogged, that's a bad day. And I, unfortunately, there's not too many tips I can tell you here, except for, um, I promise you my techs are not gonna reach their hands up there to unclog it. That's the only tip I can tell you, they won't do that. The only thing they'll do is uh, the two things that I'll recommend here. One, drop chemical in there and hope and pray uh, that it'll break it up and then drive it around to see if it'll slosh it and try dumping it again. If that does not work, um, you can try uh, spraying it with a wand down in there, try to shoot it around in there, see if that can go. This is kind of a long shot though, so that one probably won't work because you're probably gonna stick that halfway into the tank that's already filled with poo. This is your only other, or there's only two last options. This device here, you can hook this on the end of your pipe, hook your hose up, and then you can hook a hose right here. This will shoot water up into the black tank, and maybe that will toss it up to be free in order to drain it out. Um, so that's about, a, I think a 20 or $30 part, don't, don't quote me exactly, but uh, this is one of, one of your last options to try to hook it up this way. If this does not clear it, this means you got a really big clog in there. Uh, I think it's Pat's services, not Pat me, uh, like the actual dumping service, septic tank dumping service that sucks it out. You're gonna wanna give them a call and see if they can suck it out. Because if it comes into the service center, I have no way of freeing that safely for my guys. Uh, the only thing I can do is recommend to drop the tank and take it out of there. Uh, just for hazmat purposes and everything else, because if you, stick anything up there to try to free it. By gosh, do not stick anything up there to try to free it because if you stick a broom handle, I've heard stories, and got it free, the amount of poop that's gonna come flying out there that you can't stop is gonna get everywhere. So you gotta be quick with the handle to close it if you need to, but uh, that's, that's a choice on your own. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that, but that is another way. Pat's services, or, or um, I'm sure there's a few other ones. Anybody who, who uses a septic system that has to get it pumped out, that service can hook up to their and try to pump it out for you. So um, that's some of the key things about a black tank system and clean out. Um, you know, main thing is always make sure it's cleaned out, never leave the valve open, and uh, you know, <laughs> try not to get poop on your hands. Um, so that concludes that type of the seminar and camping tips, as well as uh, waste management. If you have any questions, oh, I think my daughter wants to say something. Come on over here, sweet pea. Say hi. Well, I'm gonna open up for questions. Oh, okay. Okay, what did you wanna say? Hi. We'll see, oh. do you have any questions? Do you say, do you have any questions? Say, do you have any questions? No. Yeah. I know you don't have any questions. Hi. If you guys have any questions, you know,
please type in right now. I'm gonna keep this beep going for the next uh, couple minutes. Um, uh, if, you're if you're not watching this live and, and you're watching it later on and you have any questions, please contact the store. Area code 262-321-2500. Ask for service or parts, depending on what your question is. And uh, we can answer that for you. And I'll open the floor to any questions. Um, somebody asked what's a gray water flush and uh, realistically a gray water flush out is what I'm saying is I think if you're referring to it earlier when you open the black tank to dump all the poop out the gray water is your shower water your dish water um, uh, or your sink water your bathroom sink water you're gonna that's like kind of dirty water but it's not like hazmat that's not poop so you can open it up and rinse out your hose uh, that that dirty water, but it's not like poop water. It'll clean your hose out and then you can do the flush out system So it's always best to hit the black first clean out the hose with the gray water um, Two people ask questions one. What would you recommend to reduce the smell of the gray tank same chemicals? Uh, no, uh, somebody asked what would you do to reduce the scent of the gray tank if you have a, a, a Gray tank that's smelling uh, that's a rare problem to have but it does occur and it's usually because water was left in there or stagnant water there's bleach solutions out there that you can use through the gray tank uh, it's kind of like similar to the bleach solutions that you would use for your freshwater tank um, if you call our shop by my shop foreman I think has that formula uh, or you can there is an actual chemical out there for gray tanks itself um, that you can utilize and then um, does the built-in tank flush spray on the tank sensors. Okay, uh, somebody asked us the built-in tank flush on the tank sensors. What it is on that flush system, and this is not a good replica that I'm gonna show you, but I'll, I'll give you the concept of it. It spins, it's almost like a, a this, but think of it as a bunch of little holes and it just sprays everywhere. So does it guarantee to get the sensors? No, no it doesn't. It's meant just to rinse it out. If something's stuck on the sensors, then it's this. You may get lucky and use that flush out system, and it may get it off. I have never been lucky doing it that way. Uh, I it, it's never worked for me. Some people have said, "Oh, I got it off with it," but the other way, filling it up full, putting the chemical, driving it, is the best trick. I've even heard some people putting ice chips in there uh, down the toilet to help slosh it around while they're driving. You ask 10 people, you get 10 different ways of doing it. None of them are really wrong, it's just different ideas. But no, the flush out system is meant to just rinse it. If you get lucky and it comes off, great, but most of the time it does not. It just sprays around in there. Um, someone asked, I have a garden hose attachment on my dump tank. Tanks, are they for flushing? Uh, a garden, somebody asked you have a garden hose attachment on my, uh, which one? Dump tank. On your dump tank? If are you have a- flushing? If you have a garden hose attachment, uh, that would be probably the flush out system. But the easy way to know if that's your flush out system and it goes, by the way, that little flush out system that you have that you, on the side of your camper is only for your black tank. But if you have that attachment there, uh, look above it and see if it says must have valve o black valve open in order to operate, then you know that is for your black tank flush out system. Uh, otherwise, I would like to see a photo of it because I wouldn't want to tell you something incorrectly. And you can send in a photo uh, calling the service department and they can send it and get an answer for you. But I'm pretty sure if you just see that sticker above it and it says valve must be open when in use, uh, that's a pretty telltale sign that that's your black flush out system. Alan said good job, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, uh, I think we've answered all the questions. If you have any more questions, uh, I'm gonna shut down the feed now. 
uh, please contact uh, our service department at 262-321-2500 um, and enjoy the camping. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, any questions, like I say, just give us a call. We can answer them for you. Thank you. Have a good day.